175 for new blocks. But uh, 15 blocks are for strict conservation. They don't count. So they harvest 120 for new blocks. And each year they harvest three looking blocks. So four million of them. They strictly for it. But in here, no management. They just enter. In shorter time, they enter twice in sub time or three times. In the end, there are very few things left. So the difference is primarily uh, the management plan and harvest techniques. But this management plan includes capacity building. The how to care staff for a long time. So social uh, uh, aspects are improved, of course, in the management. So uh, do you like to answer your question? Yes, yes. Okay. Maybe I'll yes, ask the next question. My name is Indiani. Uh, I'm a doctoral program student. Uh, during 10 years of uh, your research, uh, you, you find 40 species of mammals. Right? Uh, could you mention what uh, the animals that can be a seed dispersal? Okay, yeah. uh, so we can, uh, I think it is a good uh, idea that uh, the seed dispersal can uh, also uh, support for sustainable forest management. That is um, uh, my first question. Sorry, <laughs> I have to present at the second question. Uh, uh, from your research plot, uh, it is near or not from the community settlement. Uh, I think it is uh, also um, a very uh, question uh, if your research plot is near from the community settlement, uh, uh, so the, the animal can bring the seed from uh, the settlement into the forest or uh, from the forest to the community settlement. No, uh, I just <laughs> want to know about your research plot. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Heidi. Um, my question is about the, the technical stuff. It's about uh, how did you uh, estimate the carbon uh, using a lancet? And how about the accuracy compared to the conventional method? Okay, thank you. I'll be speaking in the second. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. Thank so you. I'll answer to your question okay. later. Yeah. Okay. I'll okay. answer to your question. Uh, seed dispersers. Uh, seed dispersers. Um, I think uh, many uh, seed, effective seed dispersers, uh, I think. Emuron and uh, others know better, uh, but uh, for instance, um, my student collected raw uh, things, raw things, from other students to collect seeds. Obviously, students are doing these classes, but. Um, some way, you know, like uh, many people think uh, animals are good seed dispersers. For, for instance, uh, orangutans. Like you, you hear orangutan can disperse seeds, but very few evidence. My student 
rhythmic Malaysia to million, which is about one cubic meter to hundred billion. It's okay, not that high. Not that high. Also, uh, forests are produced are protected, managed excellently, but ecosystem services, carbon, biodiversity values are not included in the price. It's purely based on timber values. And so it opens, it's strange. They protect the forests very well, but they sell uh, the rock as wood. So the, the price is very low, and ecosystem services are not really included in the price. So the amount for forest health is not enough. They spend lots of money to apply sustainable forest management, but reward is very few. Um, so foresters in Dharmapa enhance ecosystem services. Promise is paid for the timber, do not include the values of ecosystem services. Forest certification, as it is, cannot internalize ecosystem services. Internalize means cannot incorporate ecosystem services values. Therefore, I think a new, better institution has to be established to better develop the forests. This is my idea. So, uh, like uh, currently, uh, we have FSC forest certification that was initiated in 1992, a long time ago. So, 75 forests and products for 75 forests are valued by consumers. Uh, products produced with minimal impacts are verified with standards and indicators and certified. However, forest, forest certification cannot certify ecosystem services. They certify them. They don't, uh, this certification system cannot certify biodiversity or conservation value, soil conservation value, water protection value, so on and so forth. Uh, so, uh, consumers uh, assume if they see FSC logo certified timber. Consumers assume their goods are safe. Like uh, housing companies, if they see logo, they assume these wood material are uh, environmentally safe. But uh, these consumers, housing companies, do not know how the forest is there. They just assume forest must be good. Uh, so uh, they pay for safe material and goods only, but not for, for the forests from which materials, goods are there. So they pay for products, but they don't pay for, for the forest ecosystem services. Okay. Uh, indeed, the FSC forest certification, uh, after nearly 30 years, is uh, adopted uh, very slowly. Okay. This shows uh, FSC certified logging companies, forest concessions in uh, Kalimantan and in the south. Okay. Uh, this, black, this black mesh indicate production forests where no uh, timber is produced. This, Yellow star indicates certified uh, forest. Uh, like my uh, partner, Rata Kimba, Otamas, they are certified. Uh, also, Gnong Raja Abadi Group, GGA Group, has excellent forests, certified forests. But uh, the rest are not. This is primarily because uh, this, even if certified, 
for instance, cannot derive greater profits. Uh, so, uh, so far, uh, this new uh, certification system, uh, we pay for uh, products, but to better rewards, for instance, we have to pay for ecosystem services. That is my idea. So I started a new uh, program after 2012, which is uh, forest certification for ecosystem services. A new system. In 2012, uh, FSC uh, started pilot test of forces on certification for ecosystem services. So uh, I was lucky to collaborate with FSC. Uh, FSC pilot study site. Uh, is in Lombo, uh, East Kalimantan, and West Kalimantan. So uh, I was invited by BBF to start project here in East Kalimantan, uh, where FSC pilot tested uh, carbon and biodiversity ecosystem services certification. So, but at uh, that time, we didn't know how to evaluate biodiversity mm -hmm. for such wide areas. Okay. So I joined FSC pilot test in Pepe Lata Timba in East Kalimantan to answer how to evaluate biodiversity. So according to FSC, there are five ecosystem services. There must be more, but in, in the FSC system, they regard these five ecosystem services are important for forestry. One is carbon sequestration. Second is biodiversity conservation. The third one is watershed service. Both soil conservation and recreational services. So these are uh, important ecosystem services which are expected to be managed uh, sustainably in production forests. Uh, in order to conduct this new idea, new certification, certification for ecosystem services. There were two challenges at that time. Can foresters really evaluate ecosystem services in concessions? Because their concessions are very uh, huge, large. It's impossible to visit every place. Some areas, many places are very more. And then I think the second question was how to evaluate biodiversity for a large area. Okay, but we had already experience in Lamako to answer this question. So based on our experience in Matsama, we went to Pete Rata Timba to help evaluate uh, the ecosystem services. Uh, we developed a new method, which is called Bore. <laughs> Bore, in short, is a biodiversity observation for land and ecosystem health. Okay. This is uh, methodology, particularly for foresters, used by foresters, 
for four stars by four stars. A rapid, robust, and cost effective method to estimate carbon stock and biodiversity together at the same time in a large area of volumetric collection forests. By the way, uh, can I speak 15 more minutes? <laughs> Sorry. How it works? Okay, this is a, a map showing biodiversity, uh, forest intactness, uh, using species composition. This is a, a huge area, about 100,000 hectares, and it shows a map of biodiversity uh, based on forest intactness. Uh, uh, for instance, these green areas include uh, climax species, more detailed crop species. Red areas include uh, pioneer species. So this is based on species composition, not number of species. Uh, more climax species, more pioneer species. If uh, this is Christine forest, and we harvest timber, and then with strong impact, uh, forest become degraded. You lose climax species. On the other hand, pioneer species in increase. This change is linear. This change is linear. If you study the number of species, doesn't change because it, this is a sum of pioneer species and diptok species. So if you study the number of species, it really doesn't change. But species composition change. Mm -hmm. So we use mixing ratio of these two species groups to indicate logging impacts. Uh, this is a map showing the mixing ratio of these species. Uh, so to develop that map, we place 50 plots only, uh, 20 radius, each 20 meter radius, with a stratified random design. So we, we divide the whole area into pristine forest, stratum one, highly degraded stratum 5. So stratum means a uh, class of forest degradation. So for each stratum, we place 10 plots. For existing forests, we place 10 plots. For degraded forests, we place 10 plots. So all together, 50 plots. Okay. And what we did is uh, we apply multi-variate analysis. So this is uh, 50 plots but from 1% concession. Okay. So we know in the English plot what kind of trees grow. Right? So we'll use this data and we apply multivariate analysis. It can be principal component analysis, but we usually use NMDS multivariate analysis. So you see these 50 plots. It's sorted from starting one, pristine forests, degraded forests, mildly degraded forests, and starting five, highly degraded forests. It's sorted. Okay. So uh, along the axis line, forests are sorted according to species composition. If we compare axis one value, axis one value, and biomass, there is very good relationships. So this is high stock, very good species composition. This is low stock, degraded, very poor species composition. Okay. So we use axis one values and so each plot has axis one values. We compare with round effect as values. 
we extrapolate to the entire area. So every point has axis and lines, which is indicator of species composition. So this is forest intactness map that we use. So this is where our vessel. So we repeated uh, this Bore method. Uh, we started uh, uh, this project. We went to Latatina. We told foresters how to sample, how to study forests. In the, in the lecture room, uh, by Yuyun translating my <laughs> uh, lecture. Foresters. The foresters went to, and we taught in the, in the field how to sample. So they collected data. Uh, Lata timber uh, is a huge concession. They started operation since 1970. And they care for it. And uh, I don't have to explain precisely. So we went to this concession and foresters collected data. So they uh, applied our body method their forests and then uh, they developed this map. This is carbon map. As I said, our body method uh, study species composition. Also, we can calculate carbon value in each plant. And we derive carbon values and use Ramsat reflectance values to extrapolate to the entire area. Okay. So this is a uh, carbon map for 2010, carbon map for 2015. Uh, the difference between the two years was three ton per hectare. It's reduced actually. It's declined because they harvest timber. It's declined slightly. But uh, the baseline east Kalimantan is enormous. Uh, carbon emission from logging is 60 ton per hectare per year. This is statistical value. In Lata timber, Carbon emission, there was carbon emission because carbon declined, so it means emitted. Okay. Uh, it's 3.6 ton per hectare per year. So we verified carbon emission is lower than East Kalimantan baseline. Okay. Uh, this is forest intactness map for. 2010-2015. Unfortunately, forest intactness, mean forest intactness, declined. This value is uh, NMDS axis one value. You remember this value. Okay. It's declined. Unfortunately, because they harvest them. Uh, you may wonder why carbon did not decrease much, but species composition declined a lot. This is because there are lots of pioneer species. Pioneer species grow faster. But of species composition is very soon. So, uh, species richness, I mean, biodiversity or forest intactness decline. Uh, unfortunately, in Rata Timba. But we also conducted wildlife survey based on the methodology that we developed in Sana. This time we placed 10 floors and we placed 170 cameras. We continued study for two years. 
based on this study, uh, photograph frequency did not change even after reduced impact logging for most wildlife species. So we used camera top data and for each species we compared before reduced impact logging and after reduced impact logging. The frequency of photographs did not significantly contribute for most animal species. Okay. Uh, so, do you remember? This was a pilot test of ecosystem service certification. Okay. So, uh, PT Rapa Timber produced documents for auditing to be certified by FSC for ecosystem services. And based on our results, Rapa Timba was certified for ecosystem services for the first time in the world. This is a new, totally new system. First logging company receiving ecosystem service certification for carbon. Carbon is maintained through reduced impact logging. And diversity of terrestrial mammals and wild species is maintained in other things. Uh, unfortunately, forest intactness declined. So we didn't, didn't, couldn't use that data, but uh, diversity of wildlife species is maintained. So ecosystem certification was approved in the pilot test. So Rata Timba uh, was certified for sustainable management for certification in 2013. Now they are certified for ecosystem services. So they have two certifications. So we expect they have better market access. And hopefully companies invest money donate money because they are carrying carbon and violence. We hope. Don't know yet. We don't know yet. Okay. Uh, so, based on our research and uh, also research results in the other areas, FSC now started ecosystem services certification process. That was officially started a few months ago. This is a new system to, to reward foresters. You can download free. This is a document showing how to, to verify ecosystem services, how to certify, so, and how to get benefits. If you see Pro 3006, English version. Okay. Uh, so, um, like I introduced, I've been studying forests, uh, logged over forests since 2003. My research progress, progress was very slow, but I tried to verify there are benefits in sustainable forestry. And I tried to, to help developing a better system to reward foresters for uh, the payment of ecosystems. To me, 
first certification is a it's a transient system. It's a it's a it's a good system, but uh, uh, it's a transient system. Okay. And also a better institution based on higher ST and ecosystem science is needed. And uh, indeed, ecosystem science certification may be an answer to this second which can internalize ecosystem services. But we do, do not know actually this new certification system can invite financial uh, benefits to forestries. We will see. Okay, so uh, that's all. And if you are interested in more, uh, you can download It's English with uh, Megan. Yeah. And also, uh, recently, uh, just last week, we published this paper uh, introducing Bole. Uh, you can visit um, uh, it's a, a free uh, open access channel. Uh, you access to sustainability. Uh, you just type Bole and then you you can download this paper. Just came up last week. So thank you very much and uh can we get the first part? So uh we have fifteen minutes for discussion, so I'd like to invite you again. Uh Asina. University Ecosystem Service uh, by collecting data on biodiversity of uh, mammal and bird. Do you think that uh, you would like to add uh, more action when uh, monitoring biodiversity, not only bird and mama, maybe another species like uh, maybe some plant or even uh, microbes in the soil and maybe uh, another taxon? Uh, maybe using uh, like new technology like uh, DNA, the DNA, it can be uh, easier to collect the biodiversity from that kind of samples. Okay, thank you. That's my question. Thank you. species competition uh, actually three species competition decline but if you use wildlife it didn't change 
So there is a, a, a discrepancy between results of three species and results of wildlife. Three species composition is more sensitive, I think. Uh, wildlife species are robust against logging. So using wildlife species as indicator uh, is not that sensitive. But in Rata Timber, unfortunately, species diversity, I mean uh, biodiversity based on three species composition decline. So we did not use that, but instead we used quite a lot. But uh, in reality, uh, using three species composition is much sensitive, mm -hmm. much sensitive, mm -hmm. cheaper. So we encourage the use of three species composition. So discuss it. Uh, in the point of view of wildlife, when there is a disturbance, it gives uh, better access for the animal and also uh, providing more biomass uh, in the breast floor and it's been so accessible for the for the animal. That's why you may find discrepancy between the reduced uh, intactness and the number of species. This is how it related. And secondly, also the impact of surrounding landscape also important. It means if there's a disturbance and in the time of this disturbance, the, because wetland can be moved, can move to any, any places and they have uh, to move, then maybe the disturbance of cure they can we create our dispersed to other place and then when it finishes, then move again to the location. So this is a bit more complex situation that uh, maybe analyzing at a site level can be difficult to understand, but if we understand at a larger landscape, probably it will be, uh, there is an explanation for it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree. So many more questions or uh, maybe somebody want to continue education in Kyoto <laughs> asking what uh, opportunity uh, it's also a good time for you to to ask for that. Not yet. Uh, sorry, I just would like to know more about uh, the orangutan distribution. Oh, uh, yeah. That is with the uh, camera attack. Yeah. So, but we don't find uh, significant difference. Or maybe more, more chance for orangutan to walk on the floor, then uh, more chance in the conventional than in uh, FSC. Okay. Uh, Actually, if we apply statistical analysis, uh, orangutan uh, is more abundant in the gradient forest than in pristine forests. But is it camera set? Yeah, exactly. uh, That's the point. Yeah. The point with the camera set is that if you uh, yeah. investigate the camera set for orangutan, it's mean they have problem. Because uh, they might uh, find more parasites in, in the orangutan uh, when they walk on the floor. Maybe the density can be higher because this disturbance is also important for them. But because they walk more on the forest or they have problem then on the yeah. I think it's possible because we use only camera traps yeah. which can take photographs in the ground. Yeah. And these are somewhere. Yeah. Three species. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's maybe misleading. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? Maybe they are sad. <laughs> okay, but uh, I think uh, still we still have time. So please, uh, if you want any, if you want to introduce yourself to uh, professor, uh, it will be very good time this moment because in the next few hours he has to leave Jakarta for uh, field work in Kalimantan. So just get your time. It's only a few minutes left. Just come uh, to him and then introduce yourself and if you want to connect more, it will be also good for you. And also I'd like to say thank you very much for your kindness to share your knowledge and also your experience regarding uh, forest certification and, and, and particularly with the bullet new approach uh, for us. I think this is very new for us and also congratulations for your publication, published paper. Uh, I think I will soon download it for getting this uh, very good uh, result. And also, uh, again, I would like to thank to all of you who have uh, contributed to this occasion and uh, meet uh, us. Uh, and we hope we can meet again in the next uh, other general lecture and with other. Probably next year. We will come again from good to link and we have a good day next day. Okay, thank you very much and have a nice day. And of course, for the problem.